It's easy to forget how easy it can be to create fantasy races and monsters. It can be as simple as taking an average everyday animal and giving it humanoid characteristics. But simply having an animal start talking and walking upright isn't enough. There are many things that must be considered when creating a brand new race from an existing creature. Such is the case with lizard men. But what are lizard men? How would they be treated in the real world and how would they interact with us in history? Let's talk about it. This is Fantastical History. When discussing lizardmen, the name itself tells you what you need to know. Picture a creature the size of a man, if not a bit taller. They appear reptilian with long tails, sharp teeth, and round eyes. They have forked tongues and they speak in low, hissing voices that are somewhat gravelly. They likely don't have any hair and they have scaled hide. This is the standard lizardman. Good examples of these beasts in media could be the Argonians of the Elder Scrolls, the Lizardman race in Warhammer Fantasy, or the Lizardman in That Time I Got Reincarnated as a Slime. We won't be addressing Lamia in this video, we'll save them for the next one. Well, I guess that wouldn't be so bad after all. And before we jump into Lizardman culture and society, let's get a few things down about their biology and nature. For the sake of this video, we're going to assume all lizard men are cold-blooded like their modern reptilian counterparts. This limits where they can settle and live. It also limits what times of day they will be most active. Lizard men also reproduce through egg laying, not birthing. This will be crucial as we'll discuss later. Lizard men are highly carnivorous and likely make hunting, fishing, and raising food to eat an important part of their day-to-day -day routine. The lifespan of an average lizard man is likely not that different from a human's, assuming they are healthy. And it's also important to note that because lizard men have scaled skin, they will be more durable and able to withstand more physical trauma than an average human. But the downside is healing any wounds would take longer and likely would only happen when they need to shed skin. Lizard breeding is a bit of a question mark, though. In real lizards, female lizards have a mating period where they give off a special scent that informs males when it's time to mate. This begs the question how much physical attractiveness goes into lizard women. Do they care about how physically attractive they look, or do they give off a scent like lizard counterparts do? I'd like to think it might be something along both lines. Maybe lizard women do care about physical appearance, but also know that when it's time to mate, they can give off the pheromones necessary to arouse men. For regular lizards, when they do mate, the lizard will lay fertilized eggs shortly after. After. For some species of lizard, this can be as many as 20 eggs, while for others it could be one or two. But in the case of lizard women, it would air more on the lower end, as lizard men would have to eat quite a lot, and thus having fewer amounts of feed would help control resources. A typical lizard woman might lay at most three or four eggs at a time, and assuming all female lizards lay their eggs around the same time period, this means lizard reproduction would be an essential and almost ritualistic part of their lifetime. Now, just like real lizards, the lizard man race is likely somewhat diverse. Some lizard men would likely try to populate various tropical or warm regions of the world, and you could potentially find many different versions of lizard men within them. Perhaps in hot, dry, sandy deserts, you might find lizard men with thicker scales to withstand the dust and sand and dryness, like horned lizard men, iguana men, or crocodile like lizard people. In wet, marshy lands, more thin skin and moist bodies like skink men, anole, or gecko men might be common. And in temperate or tropical forested areas, you'll likely find anything from chameleon men to monitor lizards and maybe even Komodo dragon variants. The possibilities are only limited by the different environments in which the race could potentially populate and evolve in. This means not one lizard man culture would be exactly like the other, and there will likely be those that thrive more richly and strongly than others. But there is one thing we can say with some degree of certainty. Humanity and lizard men would likely not get along at first encounter. There were a few reasons for this, and the biggest one being their physiological differences. These two races are practically polar opposites. Humans don't live well in tropical rainforests, dense humid jungles, or hot arid deserts. They would only live in small tribal territories or near oases like, like these areas where they would have access to water, and even then, the humans who try to live this way would struggle to survive. Only a handful of human civilizations have ever made living in these conditions tenable. We're a race far more adaptable to temperate zones, but lizard men would thrive in tropical and hot conditions like deserts. Think about the Mayan or Egyptian civilizations and how vast they were in their own difficult circumstances. They were anomalies in the grand scheme of human civilizations as they were able to live in such harsh conditions and do very well despite not having access to more modern medicines and the like, as diseases were major threats to humans in jungle or desert conditions. Note how the only reason Egypt flourished at all was because of how much they clung to the Nile River. Humans do not survive in deserts, we survive by rivers that run through them. 
Lizardmen, though, are not as constrained. Lizardmen are more adaptable to the hot, humid, and difficult. In jungles, lizardmen are more immune to the diseases and dangers of jungle and forest living, able to last longer without fresh sources of water in the desert, and capable of withstanding more blistering heat. In contrast, lizardmen would not do well in more temperate areas like the United States, where twice a year we enter cold periods. As cold-blooded creatures, this would be especially difficult for them to adjust to. Imagine how frustrating it can be for us humans to adjust to a new changing temperature, but then consider our bodies were created to do just that, to adjust. Lizardmen were not. Reptiles do not adapt to change as easily and would not thrive in such conditions. They would stick as close to the equatorial area on the globe as they could. This has the disadvantage of limiting their area of living, but the advantage of having access to some of the most rich lands in terms of resources. And it is for this reason that if lizardmen existed, they could potentially alter history as we know it. Because it would mean that Egypt, one of the earliest civilizations to ever be formed, could have potentially been a contested battleground for the empires of the lizards and the Egyptians. When the Egyptians first settle by the Nile, they will more than likely clash with lizardmen. Lizardmen, being proud and fierce and territorial, would not surrender their oasis and war would likely ensue. And in this case, the lizardmen have home field advantage, and it's likely the Egyptians would probably be forced out. This could alter history almost irreparably. Without the Egyptians to begin starting civilization or large civilizations in that part of the world, it could change what happens to humanity. But let's give humanity one advantage. Because remember, humanity has always possessed one great advantage over all other animals in the animal kingdom. Animals like lizards evolved to adjust to their environment. They have what they need through their body's evolutionary traits. Humans, meanwhile, have always had to use their creativity and their adaptability to adjust to their environments. A lizard has evolved to adjust to one specific environment. They would not do well in a new one. Humans have always adapted to any new environment they find themselves in, meaning we have the advantage of changing our tactics, our methods, and our ways of living. While the lizard men have relied on their harder scales, their evolved bodies, and their ability to bask in intense heat, humanity would develop technologies and even metallurgy. We need to consider the reality that lizard men likely will not develop technology at the same rate and way that humans will. Humans are not as physically capable of survival without our ability to adapt, create, and build. Lizards are more naturally built to deal with the elements, and for this reason, lizardman mentality is to be direct, straightforward, and pragmatic. Lizardmen will not see much need to establish armor or clothes when lizardmen possess hard scales as natural protection, and other than perhaps some straps of leather or hide to cover genitalia, most lizards would not see the need to cover themselves completely. Reproduction is essential for survival, and females will likely not have much need for societal standards of modesty. Remember, we're still not sure if female lizard women require the need to look modest or physically attractive if they can give off a pheromone to entice breeding. Survival is more important than being modest. Stone Age level weapons would be the practical thing as they are easily built, easily obtainable, easily maintained, and replaceable. And the lizard man's natural predatory nature, claw-like hands and sharp teeth would likely help with the overpowering of prey. They would specialize in close range weaponry. Lizard men would likely use spears, axes, or clubs of some variety made of sharpened stone, obsidian glass, or gemstones with which to do battle or to hunt. Their armored hide allowing them to get in close without risk of much bodily harm would make them aggressive and somewhat sure of their own strength. They likely would have few rivals until humans arrive, and this is where humans would have an advantage. Humans have always had to adapt and grow to survive. They would, pro they would progress beyond the age of stone and likely into the Age of Bronze by the time they encountered lizards. The Egyptians did develop metal weaponry of the Bronze Age, and lizardmen would likely have never seen a need to develop metal equipment or weapons, as their hides had always given sufficient protection enough. A war between the Bronze Age and the Stone Age might give a great advantage to the Egyptians, especially if the Egyptians have learned to master horses and charioteers. Technology would become a great asset, and it would mean a pivotal advantage to the humans, and in the end, the lizardmen might have to relinquish the Northern Nile Basin to humanity. And this would change the lizardman's way of thinking forever. If humanity could gain such ground through their discoveries, could the lizardmen? Without the knowledge or creativity of humanity, then their next best chance is to set aside their pride and try to trade. Trade between lizard men would not be easy, but in time as humanity grows more numerous, expands into new lands, and requires more resources of the dry and tropical areas that lizard men inhabit, lizard men will have to decide if they will trade or make war, 
and war would be very difficult for both sides. While humanity might always stay two steps ahead in terms of technology, the lizard men would never stray far from their home field advantage. Even were humanity to advance into the age of firearms, an army that walked into the dense, disease-rich jungles of Africa or South America would soon face the wrath of the jungle. Lizard men who are armed with melee weapons would not necessarily need Native American hit-and-run tactics when they would charge with absolute ferocity, ripping humans apart with ease and using their sheer numbers, armored skin, and natural predatory instinct to take advantage of even our mighty technology. But, in contrast, the Lizardmen could never have a decisive victory as they could not leave their homeland to destroy human settlements beyond it. The further they stray from their lands, the weaker they will become. Lizardmen of Africa would likely not travel further than the southern Mediterranean. Lizardmen of the Americas would probably be limited to the Central American and Mexican territories. Lizardmen in Asia would likely congregate only in the Indian, Southeastern, and Philippine Islands. Any further north or south, and they run the risk of being exposed and overcome. But in the end, they would have nothing to gain from war. But neither would we. Humanity generally could not use typical tactics like burning land tactics to burn their homes. It would not change the climate advantage that the Lizardmen naturally have, and burning their land would only destroy the resources that humanity was fighting for in the first place. Trade is the more productive option. Humans would require the food, medicines, wood, rubber, fruits, and other resources of the jungle to flourish. Meanwhile, Lizardmen would want our technology to trade for. Metals, guns, tools, and clothing. If Lizardmen want to travel beyond their lands, clothing would be absolutely essential for such a feat. So the ability to produce warm clothes would become of great value to the Lizards. Since they want to trade with humanity, they would have to travel beyond their borders just to meet with humans and do their trading. And as we progress further into the modern age, Lizardmen will no longer be able to hide in their jungles and will have to finally take a step forward into our civilization. Any civilization, cities, or towns built in their environments could only be done with their permission anyway. But by this point, Lizardmen would likely have grown accustomed to the ways of humans and their technology, always chasing after the next new discovery or invention. All of this is to enrich themselves and maintain the proud Lizardman race. You would likely see them attempt to live amongst us, learn from us, but never quite reach us. As said before, they are not quite as creative as we are. Hold on, you've never heard of cheese before, Scaly? My people hunt beasts rather than raise them, so products like this one are unknown to our society. They are a direct and straightforward species. This will mean that humans always have something of an advantage over the lizard men in terms of our intellect and ability to adapt and change, as well as our ability to settle and thrive in almost any environment. But we would underestimate the ferocity and strength of lizard men at our own peril. Though not as creative, they are a strong-willed species and it would be practically impossible to expunge them entirely from the planet. They could prove valuable allies or hardy rivals to humanity. Throughout history, we might see the Lizardmen pick different sides in terms of war and cultures based on what these uh, cultures could offer Lizardmen in terms of trade or in terms of technological advancement. Think about World War I when there are battles within the Middle East to consider. What side would the Lizardmen take, if they took a side at all? Or would they be objectors? Would they stand aside and let humans fight their own battles, but be happy to take any technological ideas they can from them? Questions like this make the Lizardmen a fascinating race to understand and discuss. But I do believe that it can be made clear that Lizardmen are a very hardy and strong race. And it would be very difficult, if not impossible, for humanity to be fully rid of them if they actually existed. In fact, I'd go so far as to argue that everything I argued about their interaction with the Egyptians would be on the positive end of things. It's very possible that if the Egyptians could not have used their technology to their advantage and the Lizardmen were able to defeat the Egyptians in their entirety, we might have ended up living in a Lizardman-ruled world. And that is a very scary idea. But that's what fantastical history is all about discussing how these fantasy races and peoples and monsters could have existed or might have existed if they were real. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in my next video.